Hi oh, there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today looking at a lozenge or pill shaped slider and trying to make everything G3 or use G3 continuity where possible. I kind of got a soft spot for doing sort of lozenge forms like this uh, because I find they're uh, visually fairly simple but can be quite complex to um, achieve and there's different ways to do it. So in this in this instance, um, I've set this up so this has actually got a true arc form on the end rather than using a full spline right the way around. This section here is an arc and around here we have a G3 connection and then in the middle of uh, use boundary surfaces etc to make this to fill the middle out. So why not dive in and explain how I built this. We'll just turn the zebra stripes on. I know people like seeing the shiny stuff at the beginning. So there was a bit of learning along the way on this as well, but I might cover that off at the end. So if you want uh, to see me drop some of these surfaces into Rhino, interrogate them in there and say what worked and what didn't work, uh, you, you might have to watch till the end. So there we go, that's a G3-ish, because there's no way to check for G3 across the edges, uh, but it looks pretty damn smooth. Okay, I'm going to roll back to the beginning and just run, rattle through how I built this. So, started, I have my plan control, which is the button size, the throw of the switch, 7mm uh, width, and these are just arcs for now. So that's control geometry. Next sketch is when I make the actual G3 connection. So what I have is a section of arc here from the first sketch. And that's terminated at 35 degrees of the vertical here. And then you can see there, this is my G3 spline. I show the curvature there and show curvature on my arc. G3 connection here uh, and the same here, joining onto a line. And that, that spline is degree 7, so it's got 8 CVs. So 4 CVs... Uh, uh, one end, four on the other end, devoted to the to the G3 connection. I've got other videos if you want to look into the background of that. Um, I'm not going to go into the into the theory behind in, behind having needing a, a degree seven spline if you want um, torsion continuity or G3 on each end. In this video, okay. So instead, of, as I said, instead of having a spline running right through and then me having to tweak points to make this look like an arc, I've said right, we're going to use the section of arc here. And that's controlled with a um, with an angle, and then I've got an angle here as well on the other end, which gives me some lead in because I want this spline to start before the arc. If I turn on, we look at the sketch here. That's so you can see I'm deviating from a true arc by this amount in this area here, because that blue line is the arc in my plan control. But um, I don't think people notice that. I mean, you're going to have to have some kind of deviation because you can't get a G3 connection unless you force it into a tinsy little area, uh, which isn't ideal. Okay, so that's my control sketch. Next up, I have a section, which is my scallop shape. So I've got a depth there. That's 0.35 below my top plane at that point. And then I've also got a... It comes up... 0.25 above as well, above the uh, the racetrack shape, uh, and then I've got a 60 degree angle on the chamfer edge, Then I've extruded that up to the point of, not to the centre of the arc, which is here, but up to the start of my G3 spline. Okay, then I've created a plane through the point, through the peak of this chamfer here, and then I've drawn this curve here on the inside, Then I've created a boundary surface in two stages between, because the sketch has got two entities in it, it's got the G3 spline and then it's got the section of arc, G3 spline, section of arc. And there is a reason why I've done this in two pieces and why I haven't done this as a sweep. And if you wait till uh, I get to the bottom of the tree here, I'll go back and explain why I've done it this way. Okay, and then I've knitted those together. So now we've got the exterior chamfer. So now we've got to build out the middle. So I have created a, another G3 spline. In this case, I'm not controlling the end here, it's controlled with equal length relationships on the control polygon. And if I click on that spline, it's a degree 4, so it's got 5 CVs. 
I've got a G3 connection at this end, which basically means one, two, three pieces of control polygon should be collinear. And then this end here is resultant because I've got this equal length relationship on each of these control polygon segments. What I'm going to do is actually build a surface up here, a four-sided surface. So I've got a plane here and I'm going to put in a cross section. But because I was having issues around the center line, I'm going to mirror this body right across. And then my section here is an arc. So it's an arc that's coincident at each end on uh, to the chamfer and in the middle it's got a pierce point relationship using a point to the uh, center line here. Now I've created a boundary surface through there and the boundary surface is, so it's tangent on this edge here, 100% tangent influence and in the second direction uh, it's just the one, two, three sections. Obviously no tangency on our either outside edges. And then if we have a look at the result of that, it's pretty looks pretty good to me. And if we knit those together, check the deviation on the edge. So zero degrees deviation, so that's nice. That's very good, especially if you're offsetting this. Okay, next thing to do is to trim back that surface to give us a uh, one, two, three, four-sided boundary. Even though this here is uh, split into two edges, that's one boundary. We count that as one boundary. So I've created a point here just because when I'm using Selection Manager and I'm dragging back to terminate this curve here, it doesn't want to clip onto this edge. I've just added a point there. So boundary surface. Uh, this edge here I've got curvature on. Could probably be tangent as well and it would work. 100% tangent influence. And then in the second direction, got the edge. I've got our main G3 cross section again using Selection Manager. And then I have this other edge here and tangent influence of zero. Which gives us this result here, which looks pretty good. Um, I know this looks quite small in the middle here, but what I ended up doing was using Instant 3D and dragging this trim around to try and reduce a little wobble that was happening out on the outside here of the boundary. And this seemed to be the best result, was having a quite a small uh, arc here as the trim back. Yeah, so that's basically the guts of it. And knitted it together, mirror it over, uh, knit those together, of course, using knit with merge entities on. As you can see there, it joins these two surfaces because that's an extrude, so it sees them as being the same. Uh, surface, so it merges that join in the middle. And then I've just created uh, an extrude using the edge here, mirrored it over the other side, knitted that together, then mirrored it down this end. Now I've copied that over. This is me creating the hole um, for the switch to move in because I don't want to have to recreate this um, the splines. And then I've just created two boundary surfaces which are, will be planar, that's where you can go sketch on them. So just that edge to that edge, like so. And you don't need to worry about putting a tangent relationship onto those because the surface is already tangent to a straight or a planar face. Knitted those together, created a body, cut the hole in there with those surfaces. And then I've just filled out the bottom of my switch. Knitted that together, thickened it. And then lastly, I've added a move face of 0.1 millimeters to give us our clearance between the, the switch and the bezel. Okay, and then I've created a boss underneath and colored two faces to make it look like a switch. So there you go, on and off. Oh, and added a very small chamfer on the outside. So I think for a G, G3 exercise this worked all right, but I definitely had some learning, um, which I will explain now. So we'll just do a bit of spinning around here. So that's the G3 lozenge or pill shape slider um, with a chamfer around the outside. I hope to do some more exercises like this with sort of lozenge forms. kind of like getting a little bit pedantic and investigating 
the output out of SolidWorks. So in this case, it really allowed me to get a better result. So I'll go into that detail now. So I'll head back up here to why I made this as two boundary surfaces instead of sweeping a section around my G3 uh, curve here, or even why I didn't just offset this uh, and use an offset to create this inner uh, boundary. So if I do a sweep, and I pick this, okay, we shouldn't need to pick anything else here. So let's just pretend this inner boundary wasn't there, okay? Let's pretend I didn't have to make that because you're making a sweep. So you'd you'd assume that you'd just need a one guide curve and a um sorry the sweep path in a section. So that you think okay that looks all good. So I'm just going to if I get these surfaces and push my shortcut to dump them into Rhino. And we just got to wait a second because it's firing up Rhino. Okay, so here we are in Rhino. Um, you think, oh yeah, it looks fine, but if I go and interrogate these surfaces, explode those, so this is the surface that's controlled with the G3 blend, um, if I turn on my control points, it's only got 1, 2, 3 on this end, 1, 2, 3 on the other end, if I type in what, it will say it's a degree 3 um, surface in this direction, okay, so inherently degree 3 surface uh, the highest internal curvature it can have with a degree 3 is G2. So that's why when you're trying to do your nice G2 surfaces in SOLIDWORKS and you turn your curvature plot on, that's why you get this stuff going on. So these internal discontinuities. So degree 3, the highest you can get is a G2 internal continuity. And also, it's only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points along there. So I thought, okay, that's a bit weird. I want to try and get the surface to be a, a degree 7. And the other thing I noticed, if I get that profile, the sweep profile, which is here, I go insert surface, extrude. Now if I take these four surfaces over into Rhino, and we interrogate those, just explode those. So this extrude here, if I type in what, it will say it's a degree 7. Okay, so it's honoured, it's respected the input of that spline. And as you can see there, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's got 8 CV, so it's degree 7 single span surface in this direction. And then that surface there, is degree 3 with only 6 CVs, then how can that match this one? Because there's more CVs and it's higher at a surface. So if we get out the global, you type in global edge continuity in SOLIDWORKS and run it on this, so if we go G0, it will say I have a discontinuity in position with that edge. So there's a gap, and you can see that gap when you zoom into it. So I thought, oh that's pretty rubbish. That's not what we want um, if, I'm, if I'm in pedantic modelling mode. So I thought oh, there must be a better way to do this. Obviously SOLIDWORKS must cover up that, um, that tolerance issue. Okay. So back in SOLIDWORKS, instead of doing the sweep, and if you offset the surface, you end up with a similar problem. The offset is a lower order surface. So that's why I recreated this internal uh, section using the same uh, parameters as the outside spline. And then I found if I do a two-sided boundary surface between the both splines, and then I take that surface over into Rhino and we type in what? I've got a nice degree 7 single span surface okay and because that's the case the CVs match this edge matches so if I take those surfaces into Rhino and run the global 
edge continuity there. Um, you can see with our G0 for edges, our tolerance were well within that tolerance. No problem. Okay, so that's why I built those two surfaces the way I did. I know it's a little bit pedantic, but I was trying to get the best result I could. Yeah, so there we go. Bit of light Friday night viewing um, from me. So I'll put this model online. It is a... What do I model this in? 2021. There's no reason you couldn't recreate this in uh, any of the earlier versions that got G3, the G3 connection in the sketcher, because you need the G3 constraint on this end to match onto the arc. Alright, thank you for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Have a good one. Bye.